Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. My name is Kelsey, and today I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. Uh, for the solution transcript and the entire problem, you can check the description for a link to our blog. Okay, so today we are asked a quantum mechanics question. And I really like these because I am a physics major, so this really is very much up my alley. You're given this wave function, psi of x is equal to c times uh, e to the negative a absolute value of x minus 3. I have graphed this for you. You don't need to graph it in order to solve the problem, but I think it helps a lot uh, intuitively with some of the things that you're asked. So the first question asks you to normalize this wave function. And uh, to some people that might not sound familiar, but what that means is basically if you integrate uh, the probability of this wave function existing across all the graph from negative infinity to positive infinity, the wave has to exist. So that integral needs to equal 1. Uh, and I'm going to put that into math terms right now. So this is what that looks like. You need to take the absolute value. Uh, it's not going to affect this problem. It doesn't matter for this particular one. But in the future, if you see a quantum mechanics problem, know to take the absolute value. That can make a difference. And I'm just going to plug it in and evaluate this. And we're going to solve for c in terms of a. OK, so I have uh, distributed that square and absolute value amongst uh, these terms. Uh, from here, we can integrate because we know c is a constant. So absolute value of c squared, also a constant. Uh, when you integrate, you need to be careful because you have an absolute value. Uh, that's not a problem, though. All you have to do is separate it such that this is always positive. That's what absolute values do. So I'm going to do that out for you. We see that the turning point from negative to positive is when x equals 3. So we're going to take that into account when doing our integral. Also going to rewrite the equation like this. So I've split it up into two integrals. I've also rewritten this. I have 1 over here. I divided by absolute value of c squared. Now we have this equation. It's the same thing. And uh, now it's very easy you know, to evaluate it, which is what we're going to do. Uh, now something very important to notice is that we do have negative infinity and infinity to evaluate at. But in both of these respective equations, that's just going to make this equal to 0. e to the power of negative infinity, which basically that gets plugged in and evaluates to, is 0. And that's very important for us. It means, we don't have to, it means that the particle exists and is a valid wave function. And that's important for us. It's valid. We can check it here. And we can finally solve the equation. We have 1 half, one, well, 1 over 2a and 1 over 2a, basically equal to 1 over a. And by solving for it, we see that c is going to be equal to the square root of a. Uh, so that's part one. That's very important. Now we have a normalized function. It exists with a probability of 1 over the entire thing. This is a very key concept in quantum mechanics. It'll show up a lot. I think it's very interesting. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next part of the question then. So the next part asks you to find the expectation value of x. And from the graph, that is pretty clear. We know it's x equal to 3, but it also asks to confirm that through the more rigorous definition of how you would find expectation value of x. Uh, I will write that out right here. And basically, it's when you take x and you multiply it by that probability, which is given by this psi of x absolute value squared. So uh, we can just evaluate this. It becomes a pretty simple integral. We've solved for c already. We know that c is equal to the square root of a. So this it's, it's pretty 
straightforward. I've written out, I've squared, and I've pulled out a because square root of a squared is a. Again, I'm going to divide it up because, just like we did in the last problem, because of the absolute value here. That is something that has to happen. Again, it evaluates to this, and we have this extra x term, so the equation isn't quite as simple, but the integration, you would integrate by parts. I'm going to skip that step and assume you know how to do it. Uh, it's a very standard process, so I'm just going to show you what the evaluation becomes. And again, we see that just like we want, at negative infinity, at positive infinity, it disappears. We only have to evaluate it at 3 here and 3 there for each respective part. And lo and behold, we get this expression. And this is equal to 3, which is exactly what you want. And another thing important to note is that no matter what the value of a is, a will drop out here and here. So it doesn't matter what it is, it's still centered at x is equal to 3, you're still going to get an expectation at x equal to 3. Which is exactly what we want, which is exactly what we expect. It's good when math matches what you want to see. So part 3 then asks you to find the probability of finding x, or the wave function, at a value x is less than or equal to 2, and they do give you a value for a, which I believe is 4. Uh, and that means we have only x as an unknown, or quote unquote unknown. It's just a variable. We're, we have a given to us, and then the equation becomes solvable, I guess. And you can find this probability easily. Uh, because the probability, we already know this is given by psi x, absolute value squared. But this time, we're integrating from negative infinity to 2, because by doing so, we are finding the probability of it being anywhere below 2, which is exactly what the question asks. Um, so we just plug in what we are given. I'm going to just, I'm going to write it out. Uh, this integral solves very nicely. And we see vanishes at negative infinity. We evaluate it at 2. We get a very low percentage. I'm going to go ahead and put that in a percentage of 0.017%. Very, very unlikely to find it in a location of x less than 2. That's because it peaks at 3. Um, so I guess an important thing to note is that I set a equal to 4. Uh, that's what was asked. If you bring a higher and higher, you're going to find that it's harder and harder to find um, the wave function at any place other than x equal to 3. So that's it for this week's. Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more, there are playlists up here. You can watch more just like this. Uh, if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. And if you want to visit us on the Center of Math at uh, centerofmath.org, click here. If you're on a mobile device, there should be an I at the top corner over there. If you click it, you'll get all those links. So now you can say you solved a very cool quantum mechanics problem. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. <laughs>